What's going on guys? Welcome back to another episode from the 10,000 Hours Project. It's been about two weeks, I'm pretty sure, since I uploaded my last video to my YouTube channel. And if you follow me on my Instagram stories on my mini vlog yesterday, I did mention I was having trouble with my video editing platform and I couldn't get any vlogs out to you guys. So I was starting to get a bit nervous. But the good news is it has been fixed, hence why you're watching this video. I'm super excited to get back into it, but I'm really looking forward to showing you guys some of the game footage from our game against Cairns FC. So if you've been following my last few episodes on the 10,000 Hours Project, I kept mentioning that big game coming up in the FFA Cup, so the Australian FA Cup. Essentially every single club in Australia, ranging from the A-League, uh, NPL second division, straight down to every single amateur team, we get a chance to compete in the FFA Cup. My team's a top amateur team up in Cairns and we competed against all the amateur teams up here in North, far north Queensland. We ended up being the top amateur team for this region. Then we had the chance to play against Australian second division side or the NPL side, Cairns FC. And it was a massive game, massive occasion. For those in Australia, it was pretty big hype. It was considered one of the best FFA Cup games in the Cup's history um, around Australia. I think it got some mentions in some national broadcasting, national TV. Okay, so I want you to get into it, watch some footage, and as the title says, how an amateur team lost from 2-0 up against an Australian second division side in the 89th minute. The game was absolutely mind-boggling, probably the most emotional and intense game I've ever experienced in my football career. Anyways, I'll let you guys watch it now. Without a doubt, um, you know, all credit to Comets today. I knew they were a good side and they've gone out there and proved it. Yeah! Warned my players before the game. They press very well, they're extremely aggressive, they're hungry and they're going to want to beat you. I can see what a game guys so 4-3 the final score and we were absolutely devastated it could have been one of the first times an amateur beats a second division Australian side anyways for now we're getting to the voiceover so I'm playing as a holding midfielder at number six and right here I'm just covering for my center back I passed it into my left wing I probably could have done better if I hit it on the ground but I trust him he controlled it really well now here their number six picks it up from deep and here I'm just cutting off that passing lane to the striker in the middle sitting on my center back so I force him down the line now stick with him it's important here that as a team we press well and we did I cut off the lane and they're forced to go long and we win possession back now this is how our first goal was scored so as you can see our left back picked it up now it's important as a defensive midfielder I'm really there to provide a safety option so I just slide over into that left back position covering my left back just in case we turn the ball over it's important for those defensive midfielders out there, you really have to read the game well, especially from a defensive point of view. You've got to know when to cover, your positioning has to be spot on. You really that anchor and that last line defense before the opposition breaks the back four. They just saw I applied pressure to their number six and prevent him from turning with the ball just to keep that pressure on and we almost scored one. Now this plays a perfect example of why I love to play the defensive midfield position. I love defending side of the game. As you can see, I'm cutting off that passing lane to the striker. I'm forcing him down the line. As you can see, we outnumber them here three to one. Really cutting off that passing. I see him getting his head up. He wants to look for that striker. And here we win the ball back. And we bring the ball forward into a good attacking position. And that all came down to, to me simply cutting off that passing lane, angling my run and applying pressure. And that just comes down to game analysis, guys. I learned that from watching professional games. I watched that from learning my own games. Something like that could have influenced the game. If I didn't cut off that striker's option, they could have eventually scored. Very similar situation here I'm aware of their left winger he's calling for the ball and I cut off their opposition left backs option that's his only option as well I take on their midfielder and their left back I beat them both head down the byline and unfortunately I put in a pretty poor cross now their attacking midfielder is one of their danger men it's got a deadly left foot 
So here I come across and prevent him having a strike on his left foot. I'm encouraging him to go down the line. Unfortunately, he runs into me and I make the challenge. Here the number 10 is sitting fairly high. I make sure to stick with him to prevent that right back from giving him an option. So again, you can see him dropping deep and I make sure he doesn't turn with the ball. Force him backwards and I've done my job for that phase of play. Here I had a little technical issue, I was really devastated about this. See that first touch there, it went to my left foot. I was supposed to touch that forward to have my body ready and set to play that long ball. And unfortunately I had a really front on position to start off with and that ball was always going to go wide with that body positioning. Honestly for an amateur team, we were all over these guys. And we definitely played the better football and most of the guys in our team should be playing at a second division level in Australia. I mean, we pressed really well as a team, we got stuck right into their face and they thought they could come here, play their normal possession style game without any pressure. And here's a perfect example of it. Look at this as a collective. We picked, it, we picked our pressing triggers really well and it was a success for us. Three of us applying pressure. And here again, I'm cutting off the passing lane to their number 10, receive the ball and make a good switch of play straight to his feet. Now this is how we scored our second goal and again it comes down to my positioning it comes to attention to detail and this is really important as you get older. See here again that number 10 sitting really high on our back line he wants to come deep and receive that ball in that hole. Now see my positioning I'm really distancing myself from their number 10 and think giving that centre back a chance to play that ball in and as soon as he plays that ball in I pounce on it and this is how we scored the second goal. There's probably some of you who are actually a bit surprised about my style of play. You know, you see me in these training sessions, you know, with really intricate, sharp dribbling skills, but you see me in a match and I play totally different. Over the years, I've transitioned from an attacking midfielder into a defensive midfielder, even a centre back at some times. But at 17 and 18 years of age, I wanted to be a number 10. I was playing in that role. You know, then I went into college and I eventually progressed into the defensive midfielder position. My coach over there saw something in me that I didn't see and it turned out it paid dividends and I played really well in that position. And from America, I transitioned back into Australia, still playing in that number six role. And my coaches both in the US and Australia feel as though I play that number six role pretty well. In that number six role, you do need a really hard work ethic. You need to read that game pretty well. You need to be very disciplined and very selfless in that position. A lot of players don't like to or they are incapable of playing that defensive midfield role because they get so caught up in the play, in the moment, and they want to strive forward all the time. They got no discipline to hold back. It is, it can be difficult. Sometimes being a number 10 previously, back when I was 17, 18 years of age, still had that tendency that I want to drive forward, but I've got to keep reminding myself, hey, I've got to sit back, let my front three, let my front four take care of the attack. Basically, my job is to be that anchor of the team. So if we're in trouble or we need pressure taken off, they play the ball to me and I play it out. My style of play is very simple. One touch, two touch passing, less time on the ball, keep that ball moving. You know, I like to think I read the game pretty well. So cutting off the passing lanes to the striker, knowing to be in certain positions at specific times in the game. And like you saw in the game highlights, the timing of your pressure, the pressing triggers, all that accounts. And it's really the small things and the simple things and things that often get overlooked and I feel like I excel at those. And overall I feel like I'm a simple, disciplined but hardworking player and that's all the attributes that a coach looks for in a number six or a holding midfielder. Anyway, so moving on and if you like that sort of video and want me to bring out more highlights, you want me to record more of my games for you guys to analyze my own game so you guys can see how I play, how I analyze myself, comment down below if that's something you want to see in future videos. For now, um, I'm just having lunch. I've got my sweet potato. Um, with steak and green beans. Usually I substitute the steak for something a bit healthier, a bit leaner, so I usually have chicken breast. So the plan of the rest of the day is to finish off this meal, get a maintenance session in. Um, might do a light technical dribbling session, so just the 1,000 touches of drill. Uh, might do a 1,000 juggles as well, my 500 juggling routine. We'll see what happens, see how I go. Uh, I've got team training tonight as well, so we're gonna regroup, talk about the game against Cairns FC and how we're gonna move forward as a team heading into the weekend. And yeah, that should be it for today, guys. Again, I just want to apologize for the lack of content over the past two weeks. I mean, with my video editing software breaking down on me, you know, I really want to apologize for that and I'm hoping to do better in the future. Hence why, if you saw my Instagram vlog yesterday, I'm revamping the website. So I'm going to be incorporating a third element to my content. So as you know, I'm posting, well, I'm 
attempting anyway to post one vlog on YouTube and then the next day or the following day I'm attempting to post an Instagram vlog um, on my stories. Now this third one I'm going to bring in it's going to be called the 10,000 hours project blog. So it's going to be on my website. I'm going to list all my training sessions. I'm going to list my nutrition. Everything's going to be logged in the 10,000 hours project blog. So keep a keen eye out for that. It should be out mm, thinking over the next month or two, but we'll see how it goes. Anyway guys, we're back for good now. The 10,000 hours project is back on. I'm still recording my training hours. I hope you guys are too. And don't forget if you're taking part in the 10,000 hours project, please don't hesitate to post down your training hours, what you've done today, how your game went over the weekend. Please post your game reflections, how you're feeling as a player right now. Do you think you're improving? What are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? I want to know everything, guys. I'm willing to help you. Please don't hesitate to comment down below. Anyways, if you enjoyed this video and enjoyed the game analysis, please give it a thumbs up. It really goes a long way. If you're new to this space, please consider subscribing to the channel and make sure to join the 10,000 hours project journey with me. Anyways, I'll see you on tomorrow's Instagram vlog, guys. If